So what I've got in my hands right now is on my, in my left hand, I've got the Vice Pro Plus golf balls. And in my right hand, I've got the Titleist Pro V1X golf balls. So as many people know, the Pro V1Xs or the Pro V1s, just the Pro V line of golf balls has been a top selling product for Titleist over the years. As I've gotten out of competitive golf, I used to be a collegiate golfer and I'll be honest, I got a lot of golf balls for free. Now, as I've gotten out of college, I've come to that awesome realization that golf balls are not free and have started to look at the price. I want to find out, is the Vice Pro Plus golf ball good enough for competition? Is it something that I would completely replace the ball that I've been playing for the last six years, the Pro V1X, um, even though it's not considered a premium golf ball per se. Before I get started in this review, let's just take a moment to review the two companies themselves. Look at the pricing of these golf balls and just to get a background of what we're dealing with here. So we'll start with Vice. Vice is a German company that was founded in 2012, so they're relatively new to the golf ball market or just the golf market in general. Their price point is going to be, if you buy this box, this dozen of Vice Pro Plus golf balls, it's gonna cost you $34.99 on Amazon. I'm just gonna go with Amazon pricing because I'm assuming 90% of the people watching this are going to be purchasing them there. So this is $34.99. Then the Pro V1X, which is the latest model, is $47.99. So this is about a 25% discount if you go with the Vice Pro Plus golf ball. Now, Vice prides their business model on three pillars, basically. Number one, they are a direct-to-consumer um, product line. So in other words, you won't see these in golf shops. They are only sold online. Number two, they don't spend enormous marketing dollars like Titleist does for professional sponsorships. You're not gonna see the ad on TV that's you know got all the pros holding the golf ball out saying I play Titleist with the Vice golf balls. Now the third pillar that Vice builds its business model around is going to be tiered pricing. So if you buy these Titleist Pro V1Xs on Titleist's website or Amazon, no matter how many dozen you buy, it's always gonna cost you either 52 bucks on their website or um, what I said, $47.99 if you buy them directly off of Amazon. So there's no benefit to buying more than just one dozen. Now, what Vice has done, along with their direct-to-consumer business model, have also created a pricing structure where if you buy one or, I believe, two dozen, it's gonna be the, the $34.99 price. If you buy, I think it is three to four dozen, it's gonna drop you down to $29.95. And then if you buy five or more dozen, it's going to be $24.95 per dozen. So it's kind of an incentive model for you to buy in bulk and really bring these into your golf game permanently. So in reality, let's say that you buy, you know, five dozen at a time of these Vice golf balls then you're pretty much getting a 50% discount on golf balls compared to the Pro V1X. Now, the way that Pro V1s and Pro V1Xs work, um, I think it's Akushnet is how you say that, but Akushnet is the parent company for Titleist, as well as like Footjoy, um, Pinnacle, and Scotty Cameron. So this parent company, which is a public company, they actually released the Pro V1 and Pro V1X models to a new version every two years. So every odd year, they're going to release a new version of the Pro V1 sometime in the first quarter of that year. So as you'll see, if you go on Amazon, you'll be able to find these most recent ones right here, which are $47.99, or you can go and find the two-year-old model, which is gonna be, I think, $39.95. So a little bit of a discount there. You're not really sacrificing 
anything if you get the old model i don't i'd bought the new model just for the sake of this review but i would never do that on a regular basis i would always just buy the oldest model that i could find because the changes are so marginal it doesn't really matter so now that we have the pricing out of the way we'll go back to the original question which is could the vice pro plus golf balls completely replace the pro v1 x's for even a competitive golfer this review is not for those who, you know, find balls in the creek and, you know, in the rough and use whatever ball they come across. This is for someone that is truly trying to, you know, decide if they're going to stop paying for the upgraded premium golf balls. So with that, let's go ahead and crack into these, take a look at the packaging and get started with our review. Okay, so let's get into the Vice golf balls see what they look like i will have to give them the benefit of the doubt on the packaging if i were a brand new golfer and i had never walked into a, a golf store even though they don't sell them in golf stores um, this would be what i would pick up off of the rack because it's just a very sleek looking package so you see they got a nice tiger i did not look into what that means or anything but um, nevertheless i love the packaging here so let's pop open the actual golf balls. You can see that we got the Vice logo there, pretty sleek looking there. But also, something that I like a lot because I line up my golf balls on a pretty frequent basis is this, you know, already drawn Sharpie line. That's pretty neat um, compared to the Pro V1. You kind of have to draw that on yourself. So pretty neat there balls are really tacky when they come out like you can really feel some tack on those golf balls not that that truly matters but anyways let's jump into the Pro V1X now there is the Pro V1X very standard looking you'll see that there's a little bit of alignment thing here but it's not as neat as the Vice golf ball all right so the first thing that I want to do with this review is do kind of a blind test. As I've told you, I've played the Pro V1X for the last six or maybe even more years, and that's the only ball that I've played. So I have no idea what the Vice Golf Ball feels like off the club face. And so what I'm going to do is take Sharpie here, got a little black Sharpie. I'm going to cross out, pretty much scribble across all of the logos and the lines so that I have no way of telling which ball is which. And then what I'll do is I'll hit three of each of them. We'll just drop them randomly. And I'll try to kind of give a guess as to which one is which, kind of make some comments on the different feels between the two. So you see, I'm just gonna cross this off. I know everyone's probably pretty mad, <laughs> ruining a nice new golf ball here. But you'll just have to trust me, I truly cannot see anything under this Sharpie. I have no idea what that says. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. And then we'll even cover this little alignment thing so we don't, you know, we can tell the, can't tell the difference between the two. All right, so I've got all of these golf balls. Have no idea which ones are which. We're just gonna toss them out there randomly so that we have them really mixed up. And now what I'm gonna do is actually write a number on each of these so that we can verify afterwards which golf ball was which. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So we're gonna take a golf ball, gonna put a big fat one on it. And finally, what I'm going to do is I've got a three iron right here. I didn't wanna hit a driver or three wood because sometimes I feel like you can't really feel what the golf ball feels like too well. So we're gonna go no T on any of these. Um, we'll hit I guess we should hit them in order. So let me find number one. So this is number one, and I'll actually go out to the fairway and verify which ones were which after I hit them. This is number one. I'm gonna be completely honest. I have no idea which one that was. It felt like what I've been playing, so I guess I'm gonna have to go with the Pro V1X on number one. 
Let me do number two now, if we can find it. To be honest, that one felt a little bit, maybe a little bit softer. I'm gonna go with Vice on that one. So number two is Vice. Let's get number three. I wanna say that number three was Vice. So number two felt a little soft. Number three felt like a slingshot off the club face. Here's number four. That one I really felt like was a Pro V1, a little bit harder there. So we'll go Pro V1 on that one. So the last two, based on my guesses, should be either a Pro V1 or a Vice. So here's five. Again, that one felt a little bit softer and springy, so I'll go vice on that one. And then the last one, number six, I'm guessing is Pro V1, because that's the only one left. So let's hit it. All right, so let's go figure out which ones were which. So gathered them all up, all three irons. Most of them were struck pretty similar, I think. One was a tiny bit thin, and that was the shortest one that I hit. Um, for the most part, all six balls were in the same exact region. Now, I can't say that I noticed a huge difference, and to be honest, um, so far, based on just hitting three irons, six different three irons, I'm gonna have to say the fact that the distances were all the same, um, the ball flights all looked very similar. I'm gonna say that there's absolutely no difference in my head. Before we get any further into this review, let's just talk about what you might look for in a golf ball. So I may not be the best person to talk to. I've played a lot of competitive golf um, and I've played all of my competitive golf with either a Bridgestone, um, I think it was the B330 was what I started with and then I went to the Pro V1X for the last like six years that I had played. So. I would say that what I'm looking for in a golf ball is not necessarily, um, you know, that tedious and there's not a whole lot of things that are going to turn me off from a golf ball. I will say that a golf ball is one of those things that you just get very marginal returns. Um, but if you don't hit a baseline scenario where, you know, you don't get quite a good enough golf ball then you're really gonna notice. But once you get something that's just good enough, then the returns, the differences between all the different golf balls are pretty much negligible. And so far in this review, that's kind of what I've felt with the Vice Pro Plus and the Pro V1X, but we will see what happens when we get closer to the green. Maybe I'm not the best person to talk to, but I'll give you everything that I'm kind of feeling with these golf balls and point out some things that you might look for. So number one, as I mentioned, is how it feels off the club face. You don't want something that feels like those top flight range balls that just feel like they're basically denting your driver face. Um, you don't want that feel because it's just not pleasant and you know that it's kind of you know, giving you some inconsistent distance. So that's one thing that I'm definitely gonna look for. Another thing is around the greens, I make sure that the ball is gonna spin for me at least a little bit um, I don't want a ball that's just going to keep rolling and I can't get any sort of check on it. And then third and probably finally is distance control. I really want something that's going to get me consistently at the same distance. Um, based on that first test that I did, looks like both of those golf balls have done that. I know for a fact that the Pro V1Xs do that because I've played them for a while but with the Vice Pro Plus golf balls, um, it, it sure looked like those three shots that I hit with them were pretty consistent on that distance. So those are the three things I'm really looking for, and hopefully we can check all three of those boxes with both golf balls, and ideally, you know, who doesn't wanna save you know, 25 to 50% off on golf balls. So I'm really hoping that the Vice Pro Pluses kind of turn out to be a really quality golf ball here, um, but we will see. For the next test, as I talked about, we want to see if these balls both spin similarly. So I've got a 59 degree. Um, I've also got my brush to make sure that 
on every shot we have a similar um, effect so I'm going to make sure the grooves are pretty clean on all the shots. We're going to start with the vice golf balls. I'll hit three of these just normal chip shots and then we'll get into the Pro V1X's. So first off are the vices. So let's go ahead and try this. Okay, so that was the vice and it did not look like it checked up all that much. And that one also rolled out a good amount. So I'm already noticing um, right now, maybe it just is the green. We'll see when we get to the Pro V1Xs, but um, looks like so far that they're not spinning quite as much as I'm used to. Yeah, you see a good amount of rollout there. So let's go ahead and try the Pro V1Xs. Maybe, maybe it's just the greens that we're playing on. Sometimes when the greens are a little longer um, or firm, it's just not going to spin in general. But we'll go ahead and take a look here and test that out. I wanna give myself a good lie on all these. So there we go. Well, it does look like that all these ones are not really checking that much. Um, could be just the greens. Um, my grooves are a little bit worn out, but it's also a chip shots. So it's probably not gonna spin a whole lot in general. Well, I think that one kind of overhit that there, but it definitely did spin a little bit. Let's try this last one, Pro V1X. See what we get. All right, for this one, we're gonna do a little bit of a pitch shot so that maybe we'll get a little bit more spin, get a little bit more of an idea of what these balls are gonna feel like. Hopefully under this pressure, I can <laughs> hit a few good shots here. We'll see though. This, we're gonna start off again with the vice and then we're gonna go to the Pro V1Xs. So the first three are the vice golf balls. Now, I did notice that one felt like it spun a good amount. I hit that, you know, nice and low. So, and I caught it clean. So I'm a little bit surprised that didn't check up a little bit more. Let's try another one. See, I hit that one past the pin and that thing did not really catch at all. Again, I think it might be the greens, but we'll find out here once we hit those Pro V1Xs. So that one was just a normal rollout. Um, landed that one on the front part of the green and it just rolled all the way to the pin. So let's take a look at these Pro V1Xs, see if they do anything different. Let's try to put it back in the stance and put a little more spin on it. Yeah, it is the green. So that ball spun, I think, a little bit more than the Vice Pro Plus did um, when I put it back in the stance and brought it in low with a good amount of spin. But again, it's marginal differences. I haven't noticed anything substantial yet. And definitely the feel between the golf balls when they come off the club face, very, very similar with the short game shots. So one last one with the Pro V1X. So far with the chips and the pitch shots, haven't noticed a very big difference between these two golf balls. Maybe if you were on a different course with maybe some softer and um, shorter greens than what I'm on right here, you would notice a little bit of a difference. But you know, this, this course that I'm on is just your average public course. It's something that a lot of golfers are going to be playing on. So I would say 
at a course like this where the greens are running, I would say, I don't know, maybe an eight, nine or 10 on the stint meter. So very average speed. It doesn't really matter that much. So let's do one more test, which is the 50 yard test. Hopefully I can get a few in the camera view to show you the check. Um, no promises there. It's going to be tough to get it in the iPhone camera view. So let's give it a try and see what happens. So I've moved the camera back, the iPhone camera. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more once the ball lands on the green, clean the wedge up a little bit. And as we've done, the vice golf balls will go first, followed by the Pro V1 X's. I think I didn't exactly step this off, but I think it's around 40 or 50 yards. So hopefully we should get a little bit more spin on these. Maybe not. We will see. Well, that one did not land on the green. Let me try to get one to land on the green here. <laughs> well, these are good shots, but they are not landing on the green. I gotta, I might have to move back a little bit for this test. There we go, that one will land on the green. That thing just rolled out, so we'll see, but I think the Pro V1s are probably gonna act a little bit similarly. Let me try it real quick. That one's a little left. I want to say, I couldn't see it totally, but I want to say that one checked up a little bit. So far, all of these have been solidly struck. There's been no difference really in contact. All right, that one looked like it spins a lot. Yeah, these greens are not spinning too much, but that definitely spun a little bit more than the Pro Plus. So yeah, after this, these tests, the chip, the pitch, and this 40 or 50 yard shot, I'm definitely thinking that the Pro Plus is not spinning quite as much. They feel exactly the same, and the difference is so marginal that honestly, I could totally get used to the Pro Plus and not have any problems with it. Just because um, some of those didn't land on the green, I'm gonna go back to about 100 yards. Maybe we'll get a few to you know, show up in the camera on the green, but if not, I'll just comment on them. We'll see what they do from 100 yards. All right, so we're at 100 yards. This is the 100 yard stake right here. Pin's a little front, so it might be more like 95, but we'll go with it. Got to catch my breath here. Might use a camera, man, rather than running and trying to turn on all these cameras. So I brought three more of each ball, just in case we don't get the results we want. I want to get at least one shot with each ball into view on the green. I've moved that camera once again a little bit backwards. So hopefully we'll catch one here. The first three, again, are gonna be vice. Then we'll go into the Pro V1Xs. Think that one might be good. Okay, that one checked up. So we're starting to see a good amount of check on these vice golf balls. Um, let's go ahead and try that again. That was smoked. I think that one's far. Okay, that might have been out of the camera, but that was pretty good. Still about 15, maybe 10 feet actually. That one should spin, I hope. Okay, hopefully we got that one on camera. I think that one did spin a good amount. And I don't think I'm gonna ha have to hit the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth vice ball because all of those landed on the green. So let's try the Pro V1 X's now. That one almost went in. <laughs> well, that one, um, so far, 
we've seen similar distances and that was the same exact shot that I had hit with the vice golf balls and these things are flying the same exact distance like no difference at all so that's a big thing that's something I'm gonna look for and honestly so far I'm gonna have to say that the <laughs> the Pro V1X is not really worth your money but we'll get to it in the review let me hit the last two and then we'll talk about it that's a little right and at least you'll see it close on the camera that one should spin okay so that pretty much concludes it I'm not gonna go any further than this but basically my conclusion from hitting all of these golf shots whether it be the chip the pitch 50 yards or 100 yards these balls are pretty similar all right as you can see it's getting very dark outside I'm gonna play a little bit of speed golf with the vice pro plus golf ball here um, that's what I'm playing and just gonna see general performance make sure that there's no flaws in this golf ball so I'm gonna play three holes pretty short course that I'm on so probably be ripping three iron three wood off of each of these holes no tees just got to go only got about 20 minutes to play three holes here well hopefully this is entertaining because I am racing the sprinklers tonight as you can see I can still see fine but apparently they want me off the golf course Man, I tell you what, these these vice golf balls off of the wedge definitely feel like I love that springy feeling that I was talking about with the three iron. It really is nice, like coming off the wedge, you just feel like it's springing off of that golf club. All right, so this ball, pretty good shot here. I should probably play uh, speed golf more often, but you can see the divots right there and balls right here so we didn't exactly get backspin per se but let's see if we can knock it in i think this is the last hole i'm going to be doing because sprinklers are on all right got our birdie That is the first birdie with the vice golf ball. So feeling pretty good about that. I've only taken it out for, I guess, one hole here. Played one hole, made a birdie with the vice golf ball. Um, no promised results there, but definitely um, there's nothing wrong after just playing one hole in the complete darkness. Nothing wrong with this golf ball. I would say it's probably not worth your money to pay extra for the Pro V1X. I'm pretty happy with this. It feels great off the club face. Very similar distance from the Pro V1X. And honestly, the spins doesn't spin quite as much as you saw there. It kind of, I would say the Pro V1 would probably check up a little more on that 100 yard shot. But overall, it's pretty good. It's not like that ball rolled off the back of the green. So pretty happy with it. Hope this review was helpful to you and helps you, you know, basically decide whether you're going to fork up the extra cash for the Pro V1 or Pro V1X. Be sure to check out my website, thediygolfer.com. The link is in the description and I actually put together a free personalized practice plan if you take a short little quiz. So check that link in the description and I will see you in the next video.